Namaste Galactic family. Welcome back to my channel Indigo Angel. If you are new, come on into this dimension guys. I really hope that you enjoy the cosmic content here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash that notifications bell so you can continue to receive my messages. Also, don't forget to like this video and comment on and share this video so others can find out about my work. And as always, guys, thank you so much for your continued love and support of my channel and cosmic blessings to everyone. Today, we are going to do a starseed origin reading for the Orion starseeds, the Orion soul collective. As tomorrow, June 10th, we are going to have massive energetic surges from the Betelgeuse systems, okay? And that's because we have the solar annular eclipse that will be at 19 degrees 47, which is the direct solar culmination to Betelgeuse in Orion. So particularly... Those of you who are specifically from this star system within the Orion system, uh, you may be feeling this the most, may be feeling very activated at this time. But of course, those of you who are from other star systems uh, within this nation will be also feeling uh, very called to the planetary activations that are happening at this time. So over the last week, because of this infusion of radial spectrum that's a solar spectrum that's infusing the grids through the Betelgeuse system, you may have been feeling these new solar upgrades come in the body. Um, so because of that, you may have been feeling extra tired, ha uh, having a, a, an increased level of fatigue, muscle aches, symptoms that almost feel similar to fibromyalgia with muscle aches and pains. Um, this is from all of this uh, integration of this energy, this is pushing the body's molecular structure to shift with the collapsing biological geometrics. Um, this is my 13 dimensional avatar energy mechanics map. So this would be some of the geomancy that would be um, collapsing in through these uh, stellar contractions, as well as that amplified Schumann resonance of the planet. Uh, these structures begin to change not only structurally, um, but they also change alchemically as well. Um, and so we're having a lot of new DNA encoding that's filtering in through these highly activated planetary Stargate grid sites aligned to Orion. Um, and so just within this diagram alone, what I'm seeing within the planetary version of this um, is that we have the third sphere, the Orion sphere, the four quadrant hybridization sphere, which would be Regulus, Antares, Fomalhaut, Aldebaran. Okay, we get that um, four quadrant system that works in collaboration with this and also the Pleiadian system. So we have this uh, third through fifth density uh, planetary activation that's really receiving the bulk of these transmissions from the Aquila templates, okay? So it's coming straight down fifth, third, fourth um, within the body, but also within the planetary grid structures as well. This is highly, highly um, activating the Egalian uh, grid. These are uh, overlay grid or overlay uh, energy templates that sit on the organic template of the planet. And essentially this is one of uh, the most beneficial, but simultaneously one of the most harmful grids that run on the planet because of the hijacking of the seraphim uh, templates that were taken over by avian founders, essentially. And that comes from other specific star systems from Orion, also from Alcyon, also from Alpha Centaurus and Procyon, that these systems essentially were in cooperation with the hijacking of this particular grid or this particular template. This all operates off of the Templar ley line systems. 
Um, and essentially this grid right now is expanding across the earth right now. You could say that the eagle wings are fully expanded open, um, encompassing really all of the major stargates at this time that really ride that 30 degree north horizontal ley line. I've been talking about this in my updates, the Bermuda Triangle, Giza, Egypt, um, all of the smaller, more hidden, more, uh, 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 primary gates within the, the Gulf of Aden, um, and also Tibet, and also in China as well. Um, essentially, this grid really does operate most of these subliminal mind control weapons that are taking place on the Earth that extenuate from the third density sphere, um, which is propagated through the collective through the Orion uh, signature. Um, and so this is just really bringing forth, you know, more exposure of uh, the physical laws of time. So the, the memory fields of time, all of the deserts right now are activating. The Silk Road is activating at this time. Um, a lot of this just brings up a lot of interruptions in the planetary plasma transmissions. It's, it's really uh, an accelerative push in the descending collective reality field. So everything that was in a descending state is now getting a burst of an accelerative energy. Um, and so this is really mostly highly activated at Stargate sites on Earth at this time that are Orion strong held gates, such as the underwater Stargate of Aden that I've been talking about, uh, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the Kaaba, Oxium, Ethiopia, and Zion, China. Like I said, guys, all of the systems on that 30 degree north will be really receiving recalibrations through that acceleration of descension. Um, and so this comes through that radioactive plasma. And essentially that has been really sweltering up the dormant metals in the earth uh, grids and all of the sacred sites, all of the Stargate sites, and uh, it's primarily generating from cratorial meteor sites. Um, and so the one that I am seeing most dominantly within the uh, Orion template is coming particular, particularly from the Wabar crater site in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is where that iridium-based black stone at the Kaaba may have actually originated from. Um, and it's also considered Atlantis of the desert uh, is what this area is. It's called Atlantis of the Sands. Um, and it really refers to a legendary lost city in the southern deserts of the Arabian Peninsula that was thought to have been destroyed by natural disaster as a punishment by God. And so um, a lot of this is just really coming up um, and it's also particularly coming up in the black stones in the earth. Um, the black stones in the earth right now are really responding to this. So you may have been called to pick up a dark stone, work with the black stone, whatever type of stone, black onyx, um, and, you know, obsidian, any of these, all black crystals essentially. Um, because it's almost as if a collective wave of sin removal is moving through the grids at this time. It's being transmuted through the Betelgeuse gates. And um, so that would be, like I said, also through obsidian-based stargate sites. So particularly the Yucatan right now, because of the massive amount of obsidian that they have at these locations, they're receiving a lot of this absorption. This is going through a lot of transcendental and transformative energy in these locations. And like I said uh, in some of my other updates, also the iridium-based mounds uh, that um, in particular meteorite sites such as the serpent mounds. So we're going to see this transition come through into the summer solstice where we, we get into the collective energy of the transmissions that come through uh, the serpent mounds and also... Uh, other mounds on the earth that are transmitting within the the uh the metal spectrum okay the extraterrestrial metals and so um because of the serpent mounds there may be a, a core 
of iridium and dara based crystals and these are charged with that nano atomic particles of of the crystal template within the earth okay so this is giving earth a heightened geographical landmass antenna that transmits from black stones all over the world uh, metals platinum family metals from all over the world and this is happening at the sacred sites and it's also um what's happening is the reabsorption of global dark energies so a lot's really going on right now on a galactic level family the orion doors of heaven are opening up um, which is probably the strongest light that we have to see into the darkness it's going to shine the farthest that's why the orions are um, our warrior our warriors of injustice that's why orions are our freedom fighters it's because they head into the thick of this head on face on um, and a lot just has to come up to be exposed and to be revealed and this is kind of the alchemical atomic way in which the grids filter through these uh programs filter through these uh density fields and how this is a part of the earth's uh cleaning system essentially and um collective energy transcendental uh mechanics and so so much is being cleared right now um, really, there's a lot of beautiful things to look forward to, a lot of positive uh, momentum forward. It's just that that resistance has been necessary for some time um, for us to grow. Just like when a seed gets planted into the ground as it struggles to fight for the light, it feels so much weight on its back until it kind of breaks through. And I do feel that's kind of what's happening at this annular um, eclipse tomorrow with that alignment directly the culmination markers to battle geese. So, so much is being cleared right now. I am seeing bloodline ancestral warfares. These are being forgiven on some level, not forgotten. Um, over the last week, you or even the last few weeks as we've kind of uh, worked towards this uh, culmination, um, it may have been, you may have been feeling like you were just sharpening your tools for battle almost, like getting stronger, um, kind of realizing where you need to fine tune your awareness to manipulation and particular attacks that may have been uh, being projected your way. Um, but essentially this battle is releasing a lot of its momentum. It's not fully being surrendered at this time, but what it has done is it has built a spiritual armor layer, not only within the uh, universal tree of life structure within the earth, particularly around these spheres of transmission, but also within the body in those particular locations as well. Um, that does emanate out from the core of the body, from the solar plexus. So really bringing the strong spiritual armor. Um, and it's, it's as if a shield was technically installed. Um, by guardian uh, consciousness, it's a shield of protection to actually prepare those for ascension, uh, shifts in the molecular uh, structures of the biology, um, and also within the upcoming reality fields that you're going to need to have a much stronger plasma field within your energy body to take on the upcoming challenges um, that will continue to present itself as we kind of go into hydra season, essentially. Um, and so um, it's not fully released. It's not fully forgotten. What's happened is we've just really ultimately became a lot stronger with these new DNA upgrades and activations. But essentially with this alignment, all of the tension and pressure that you may have felt, um, a lot of that coming through, like I said, the ancestral line, so the maternal wounds, the uh, paternal wounds, um, is where a lot of this is generated from uh, with maybe harsh judgment. Um, so a lot of this is passing into new phases of enlightenment and new ancestral healing overall. Um, I do feel is what the Orions are kind of bringing through with this uh, new templating that's coming through. So I just want to go ahead and dive into an Orion Starseed origin reading for you guys. Let's see where the cards say that we are and yeah
Okay, Orion Starseed. So the thing about Betel Geese and this alignment is the, the way that I kind of think about it is, well, for one, you have to remember that Betelgeuse is a super giant that is in the end phases of its life. It's kind of in a bardo process where it is entering the death phases, which means that its internal atomic structure is breaking down to um, a denser alchemical state inside. So with that, there is a lot of wisdom that comes from those that embody this uh, radial encryption, this cosmic identity. It's a, it's a very, it's kind of like a grandpa type energy where they're very loving, they're very generous, they're very kind, but they're also kind of like grumpy at the same time. Um, and so they're not afraid to just kind of tell you how it is. Like if they don't like something or um, if something doesn't kind of fit into their old school wisdom or mentality, they're probably gonna voice it to you. Um, and they may just turn around in the next sentence or two and just, you know, tell you they love you or wanna take you out to lunch or something, but they're gonna really voice how they feel about things, particularly if they don't think that they are morale or from a place of integrity or they are corrupted on some level. They're very keen to manipulation and to all of the collective shadow and personal shadow that people carry. Um, and so um, there can be somewhat of a ruthlessness in the way that they express their words do cut like swords. Um, and so it's just, it makes sense that the King of Swords would come up first, King of Swords, Queen of Wands right here off the bat, just because that is, that really is the energy of Orion. It's a very uh, matriarchy or patriarchy. And I don't want to say patriarchy. It's more for masculine. It's more of like the Hierophant type energy where it's more, it's more just like authority um, and respect. And so um, with the, with the King of Swords, you know, and this activation we're going through, those who carry this encryption are really in their empowerment and their innate state of being in their mature, wise state. Um, and so right now they definitely are not afraid to voice how they feel about things. This in turn may be, uh, may cause or create conflict in their inner world. Um, those who may feel more sensitive to these types of straightforward type approaches um, may, you know, rebuttal or may uh, push resistance back towards them. Um, at the end of the day, this uh, star system is just, it's very activated. There's a lot of accelerative ascension energy. Um, I would say that the uh, geometric structure, the traveling structures within the energy field that are uplifted up off of the universal tree of life structures are really transdimensionally uh, shifting the most in the body going from um, eight sided to 10 sided to 12 sided um, uh, rotating uh, spheres within the body. So that means that the particle rotation has picked up um, and they are moving quickly with the star systems mentality. Um, and so a lot of that is kind of taking place for uh, all of the Orion Collective at this time as they are infused more with that accelerative radial atomic energy that's coming directly from their origin at this time. So there's a lot of fire and a lot of, a lot of water in the emotions, but there's also a lot of understanding uh, within the feminine aspect as well. So um, they're understanding a lot of things about their own life at this time, providing a lot of their own compassion, um, stepping up into a lot of that uh, self-empowerment type energy where they're really not having to rely on any well, anyone else for emotional reassurance at this time. So it's really about a lot of understanding um, and empathy and compassion, but there is kind of a flip side to it is there can be somewhat of dishonesty or misunderstandings that are unfolding um, and also um, jealousy. So I'm sensing there's a lot of jealousy um, and this is coming through the maternal line. 
Um, so when I was talking earlier about those ancestral bloodline conflicts that are um, essentially being um, healed or pushed through this particular uh, star system, I mean, that's why we have the king and the queen here, because we have this paternal uh, standing, this resistant uh, paternal uh, hierophant type mentality within the paternal aspect of the ancestral bloodline um, that ties us into the Templars, that ties us into our Akashic records, that ties us into uh, our grail line essentially of these patriarchal lineages that come through and descend through our identity, through our thoughts, through our soul. Um, and so working through a lot of that on the patriarchal aspect, on the patriarchal side, but also the matriarchal side is working through a lot of dishonesty, misunderstandings, and jealousies. So there could be a lot of family feuding at this time or um, a lot of unresolved personal wounds that have come up through either the mother or the grandmother or even the sister, but there are uh, certain ties right now that are trying to be worked through and are trying to heal uh, through the ancestral, through the biological ancestral aspect of the DNA. Um, and so this is ultimately clearing this for the collective. It's ultimately clearing it for the entirety of the bloodline. It's in clearing it for um, the new incarnations and the new uh, uh, soul uh, connections to come, um, essentially. But it is like water and fire. Um, and there's just a lot of turmoil. So a lot of space might have been needed at this time. You may have needed time to work through your emotions, time to reflect on things that have been said, reflect on those harsh words that uh, may have been projected or maybe you projected at one point in time um, through this matriarchal aspect of things. Um, you're really being asked right now to have patience. You're really being asked to dig deeper into understanding um, and be open to forgiveness. Right now, the heart is very guarded um, as you've had a lot of trust issues through the maternal, through the matriarchal aspect. And so it's almost like you've built a wall around your heart and it's just really hard to kind of break down those layers at this time, even though you've progressed so much through ascension, you've progressed through, so much through opening the heart. Um, at times we do fall back into building layers around the heart. And so right now, uh, those constructs are trying to break down through these new geometric shifts and also this new DNA encoding. But it does take your awareness. It does take your uh, concentration, your focus, um, and your capacity to want to release these things on some level. There is a longing to reunite. There's a, a Venusian energy that does come in here. There is a longing to return home. There is a, a longing to really bring community back together. Um, but essentially, uh, right now, you're just having to kind of shift your focus because it may just not be the time. There is this sense of stagnation that kind of falls in, this sense of instability, um, and also um, maybe some mistrust of your evaluations of certain things. Um, and then also just this feeling that you're just not ready. Um, and that is okay too when it comes to trying to work through the ancestral bloodline warfare. That is the harshest that comes through uh, the biological relations, um, essentially. And so that's all kind of being worked through through a lot of spiritual energy. This is all playing out through spirit. So you may be having a lot of telepathy, even if you're not in communication with certain people. You're receiving a lot of messages of their thoughts what they're thinking, where they're still really at. And you're just trying to evaluate if it's time to allow yourself to remove some of those uh, barriers that you've placed around your heart. Either way, either way, that spiritual armor has definitely um, become a lot stronger right now. Um, it's almost as if you are being prepared for a greater battle that is just not seen just yet. 
we have the Six of Pentacles here. Oh, I also wanted to mention too with this, I've been seeing that there is some sort of uh, hiccup with the Andromedans. So something with Orions and Andromedans right now are just really not resonating. It's been very hard to see uh, eye to eye with this other soul collective particularly. Um, it's been hard to tune in. It's almost as if there is an estrangement or if there is a distortion that's coming through uh, the Andromedan line that has affected the Orions in some way. I've yet to really fully get full visibility or clarity on this, but I have been noticing that there is some uh, estranged energy between Andromeda and Orion at this time. You're really working through the bulk of extreme polarities, um, having, not having, domination and submission, um, it seems like these uh, programs of maybe victim, victimizer are still playing out within those maternal and even the paternal aspects. And those are the programs that are trying to clear. Um, it's as if you can see the uh, polarities, but there's almost just this feeling of wanting to just opt out of participation. You're not wanting to participate. So you're wanting to focus more on your passions you're wanting to focus more on your charity, your patronage, uh, your mission. The mission to you um, feels better to shift your focus to actually helping with good deeds and helping the world and doing other things than taking the time to resolve a lot of this and thick of this ancestral stuff that uh, continues to kind of follow the Orion around uh, relentlessly. We have the three of wands. And I'm seeing with the Three of Wands that clearly what's trying to be resolved is from past lives. Okay, so it's it's very difficult to kind of try to resolve past life karma because it is something that does play out within uh, the subconscious and the unconscious more so than in the conscious mind. Um, and so it can be difficult to resolve the past life karma but essentially, um, you've been working on this for lifetimes within this ancestral aspect. Um, and so some ancestral uh, soul regression and healing may work more for you at this time. And if you work more on that, it is going to heal those other aspects within the biology um, if you focus on your healing. But again, the heart is still very guarded and it just not maybe the time uh, to present yourself to the others that would benefit from your healing. Um, and so I think just focusing on, on pushing forward is definitely necessary for you on a personal level. It's just gonna help with your sense of personal power, becoming aware of your own place in the world. Um, and you're just gonna see a lot of improvement, a lot of virtue, a lot of sprouting of new growths. Um, and you're just really needing to liberate yourself at this time. I am seeing a strong connection to uh, Aldebaran, even uh, Alpharats on some level. It's like your, uh, your being, uh, your dignity and your honor is being tested at this time. And so these star systems are uh, transmitting right now with you to assist with that restoration. Again, it, it just feels like your past has caught up with you again. Um, it's like the return of your inner demons, the return of the places where you didn't heal or you didn't forgive. Um, it may even feel nightmarish on some level. Like what's coming through feels like you just don't want to deal with it. You've evolved past it. You're beyond it. You feel mentally um, a lot stronger and capable, but it's like this persistent nagging of just crap that you're just so over. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's like it's causing your mental equilibrium to go out of balance and it just doesn't feel necessary. So you're having to really kind of use your strength. You're being more bold and you're being more courageous to uh, 
get through the the bloodshed um essentially like i said it's almost as if you've been sharpening your uh war tools just kind of waiting um for that next sabotage or that next attack um you're feeling the surrounding enemies like your telepathy is very strong with the enemy right now so you know what their tactics are you know what their games are um, and this is coming through not just that ancestral bloodline. And I say that enemies, right? I say these are enemies, even though this is, they're really not enemies. But sometimes they become the enemy temporarily because of the infusion and the disruption of your balance and your mental equilibrium. So right now, some of the people in the biological ancestral line do feel like the enemy. It's not just them, but it, it could also be some friendships at the moment and just also other types of relationships and interactions that you've had. It may even be your twin at this time. A lot of twin flames at this time are really struggling with communication, really struggling with clarity, really struggling with their intentions. Their intentions are not being transparent um, so it feels like there's just a lot of game playing, a lot of mental game playing right now. Um, all of this disruption is going to be cleared. Like there is a clearing coming. I do really feel that tomorrow with this alignment, it may be the, the, it may be at the end of its cycle as of tomorrow. And then the clearing is going to come through as we really culminate to Battle Geese because Battle Geese is just really shining light into a lot of the darkness right now. And so a lot's coming up to be exposed, a lot of reflection, um, and a lot of new awarenesses that weren't there before are starting to be revealed. You're having to actually really dissect your own internal foundation at this time. Is your own internal foundation what you thought it was? Is it as strong as you, as you thought? Um, are your wounds still, are they healed or are you still licking your wounds? Do you feel like you have to protect yourself now? Um, so a lot of these questions are kind of coming up and you are receiving your, your answers. You are being given clear direction as to what you need to do. Everything basically that you thought is true. And so you just need to really follow that intuition when it comes to these things. You really are at the end of all of this nonsense though. Um, you're spreading your wings your angel wings are expanding um it is expanding into that aquila grid as well right now so wherever you sit on that side of the spiritual line um that's also coming up to be revealed to you you're really giving it your all at this time there has been a competitiveness that has been driving you these last few weeks um, it's been about rivalry. It's been about your territory, defending your territory, maintaining power and control, but that's starting to shift. Okay. So you're really, that was just fuel that was setting you into the fire to your own burning ambitions of life. It's necessary to get to the next level on some level. You're going to come into a place of negotiations. You're going to come into a place of collaboration. You have a very strong personality. Um, and so you have a, a strong confidence in your approach. But there is a part of you that enjoys having this power and author authority. Um, but it's always come through suffering. All of your greatest life achievements has come through a state of suffering. So it's almost as if you're trying to mentally tinker your foundation to get to a place that your greatest growth no longer has to come through suffering. So it does require you on some level to look at the paternal and the matriarchal, the ancestral bloodline warfare, uh, make decisions. How are you going to move forward? You are in a great state of ascension acceleration, um, but your heart is still somewhat guarded. You are having to hold yourself open to fifth dimensional frequency while still sh uh, shielding yourself with that built up new spiritual thrust of vivation of of protective fields um, and keep your heart open while you're still trying to guard yourself from certain other people 
So it's just, it has been nightmarish on some level. Um, it's all gonna clear though. I really think once we get through this thick of this culmination that we're gonna see a clearing, you're really um, gonna have new fulfillment come forward and new inspiration ignite within your heart. And it's gonna be peaceful going into Hydra season. This I can sense um, that there's definitely gonna be some advantages that will present. You're definitely uh, building more spiritual and emotional immunity to a lot of these things that have set you back. Um, this is what makes you so resilient. This is what makes you so strong is that you can battle through the thick of betrayal and come out triumphant um, because that is your Betelgeuse nature. Your Betelgeuse nature is to be triumphant with the sword. Um, and so you're just stepping into your self-empowerment at this time and a lot of beautiful, amazing things are going to continue to be revealed as you continue to work through those deep parts of you that really need that self-awareness, that attention. Um, and so a lot of growth is taking place through these alignments. Just know that whatever hurts is just further making you become your best self. And so that's kind of where you're at, Betelgeuse Starseed. And I love you all so much. If you are waiting for a reading from me, I am about a week behind on my return time. So I am doing the best I can to get those back to you guys in a timely manner. If you would like a Starseed Origin reading from me, you can find those at indigoangel222.com. Please feel free to join my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash indigoangel. I have a lot of amazing uh visualizations that you can utilize to expand consciousness. I also have the J seal removal videos um, on my Patreon for self removal systems if you'd like to work on that. And I highly recommend that you do. Um, as we go through continuous stellar alignments and planetary alignments that do accelerate us into the descending ascension fields, we do get plugged back into those um, implants and seals that stem from the thick of the patriarchal ancestry. Okay, so it's good to continuously remove your seals. I highly recommend it. I remove mine once a month to keep my vertical ascension column clear and to keep the seventh tonal line of my body clear. So yeah, guys, I love you all so much and I will see you on the next video.